you're listening to the Simply Vegan podcast, the show that's all about making veganism easy, fun and accessible. Brought to you by the team at Vegan Food and Living, the UK's best-selling vegan magazine, you can catch us every Tuesday and every Thursday. If you're new to the show, I'm Holly Johnson and I'm joined every Tuesday by my colleague Molly Pickering. We always start off by chatting about what we've been eating and cooking over the weekend because we just love food and who doesn't need meal ideas um and we're today we're also going to be talking about how you can save money on vegan cooking so you know what kind of things to go for staying healthy but also um cutting back on the price of your weekly food shop we're also going to be reviewing some vegan smoked salmon definitely not a budget buy and some amazing filled vegan donuts our weekly catch-ups hello Hello. How you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. I was I was thinking before this, I was thinking when like if you know, like you have friends and you're constantly like missing each other's calls or you never see each mm. other and you're always like, we must catch up, we must catch up. You should start a podcast with them because then you'd have that weekly time where you have to sit down and talk to your friend. How cool would that be? I think that's like what everyone needs to do. I have so many friends that are like best friends love them for like for years and years and years but I've just not spoke to them for like four months I know because I, I just haven't got the time but yeah just I'm just gonna have about 17 different podcasts I haven't got, I don't know why I said 17 <laughs> I've not got 17 friends oh Miss Popular uh, I've not I've maybe got about three <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, even if you didn't do a podcast, like schedule it in, send a Zoom link. Mind you, everyone's a bit over that, aren't they, after COVID? It's like, I don't want to talk on Zoom, but... Yeah, I hate talking on Zoom. I hate being here. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's tough luck. You're stuck with me. I know. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, so how are you? You've got COVID. No, you haven't got COVID, have you? Your partner I haven't has. Got- I haven't got COVID. My partner has. Um, right. Yes, he got it on Friday. He woke up very bunged up, ill, whatever. And I was just like, maybe I've got it. And I started feeling quite jealous because I wanted to be looked after. I'm (laughs) such a needy bitch. It's disgusting. And as soon as I've got to give some sort of um, care to someone else, I'm like, well, when am I going to get this care? But anyway, um, we've spent all of our weekend isolating um just in case because you were like I'm bound to get it me I'm bound to get it um and I've not bloody got it it feels like everyone's getting it again doesn't it but you don't have to isolate anymore do you no but that just to me is just such a I don't know it's such an ableist approach because as soon as you sort of like my partner he works in a restaurant so yeah like as soon as he if he went into his his restaurant's really small as well so if he went into there coffin sputtering and there was someone yeah. like a vulnerable person with a low immune system that went in yeah. um then they would just get it and it just jeopardizes and I think the government just needs to be doing more to support people to stay at home so that vulnerable people aren't you know exposed to it but anyway yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enough of that covid chat back to me <laughs> <laughs> what have you been cooking then you've mentioned oh. sushi I have so sushi here she goes um, she's gonna be boasting about how amazing she is at making it and oh my god honestly so I've got a list of things that I've been cooking this week I've been really practicing my um I'll save my sushi story so going back I'll save my sushi story before we talk about products because I've just got more to give okay. um <laughs> so I've been really practicing baking I think we both sort of struggle with bacon I think that's we can say that yes yeah definitely yeah I hate it (laughs) (laughs) I don't struggle with it I just hate it (laughs) it's just it's something that I really struggle with too and I just I don't know I need to practice it I'm really working on recipes but and I want to just kind of build my cooking skills vegan cooking skills so I've been practicing baking so this week being stuck in the house this weekend even um I was like right okay now is the perfect opportunity so um I made what did I make I made a focaccia, which is quite simple, but oh, I did. Yum. It was so good. And I did it with, um, it was a chili tomato and rosemary focaccia. Oh my God. Oh, I love mate. focaccia. It's so nice. 
it was so good so easy so so easy so maybe I need to charge myself a little bit more but yeah that was really easy um so I've just been nibbling on that all day and um I made a cake I never make cakes I'm shit at them um but we had the happy pair book delivered to our door not too long ago we did we spoke to them didn't we which everyone we else did. can listen to in in a few weeks hopefully they're so yes. lovely they are literally, uh, me and Holly, we just had to stop ourselves from just like, <laughs> just, what's the word? Um, fangirling, but that's not. Yeah, that's fangirling. With, isn't that with just girls though? No. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just girls being like, ah! Yeah, I was trying to play it cool, but I didn't, don't yeah, think I did a very we weren't good job. Cool. We weren't cool, but you'll hear that. You, you will hear that. Um, so in their book, they've got a beetroot espresso and chocolate cake. And I made that with wow. a um, yeah, like chocolate buttercream, and it was so good. And I put fresh raspberries in there because a little bit of acidity. Oh, lovely! Not acidity, sweet. I don't know. I don't know what. Um, raspberries tart, tart. There yes. We go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. Oh, that sounds really good. Mm. Mm. It was very tasty. Yeah, but that's but- all the bacon. I've been. I that's all I did basically. <laughs> Um, well, I made um, I made crab cakes last night at the request of my daughter. Mm. Basically, just a quick quick story. So Friday, kind of hit a wall with with a bit of stress and okay. had a bit had a bit of a meltdown at the end of the day. Oh, mate! Um, just juggling sort of everything, and um, you, you know, sometimes it's a good thing. I think, especially you know, being a mum and working and with two children and one who's still at home with anxiety, and you know, yeah. it's just it's just a lot um and I think sometimes you just kind you kind of need to show everyone that you're not coping so that then everyone kind of goes oh she's not like a superwoman actually yeah definitely <laughs> you just need a voice that you're struggling as well because otherwise if you don't it would just end up so much worse like yeah. the the breakdown or whatever will just be so much worse and so much more catastrophic yeah exactly so I think everyone's kind of gone oh I think mum might need a bit of a bit more help around the house because it's a you know it's a big house as well it's three store like yours three story yeah we live in massive houses (laughs) yeah poor us but I mean you know I mean it's yeah it's it's obviously my choice to live here but it's just it's just yeah there's just you know we've got the dog who treads mud through that you know it's just like constant kind of cleaning up after everyone yeah and I think you've got young children as well so it's just yeah. like coupled with that and a busy job it's hard yeah. you know and yeah. that's fine you can say that do you know what I yeah, mean yeah exactly so um I think they've sort of realized that so anyway I spent the whole weekend getting super super organized like cleaning shopping meal yeah. planning I was like I can do this uh. so um Yes. So everyone's kind of been giving me a bit more input into what, you know, t- what to cook and things like that. Because even just the idea, sometimes I'm just like, what do you want to eat? Oh, I don't know. It's like, well, oh, you know, and, and then my I, head in. I know. And then you cook something and it's like, oh, I don't want this. It's like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. I can't so, even imagine how that is. I struggle with my partner. And like, I'd be like, what, what's your fancy for tea? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, well, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just making this for me. Bit of toast. Sort yourself out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So my daughter said, "Oh, what about crab cakes?" And I was like, "Oh, okay." Thinking, I don't really want to cook them. And she was like, "Well, you, you were upset that I didn't give you ideas." So I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna have to make them now." But actually, it wasn't too bad. It's mostly just like blending stuff and rolling it yeah. in um, in breadcrumbs. But yeah, after all that, she said, "Oh, they're not as good as when you last did them." <laughs> oh no. Yeah. But I enjoyed them anyway. So I had that with did, a nice salad. <laughs> what did you make it with? Butter beans um, or Yeah, ca- uh, cannellini beans and my husband couldn't find hearts of palm in the supermarket. Mm-hmm. Probably I did say ask someone because they're really hard to find. Sometimes they just touch Yeah, away. I don't think I've ever seen them. Yeah, I mean maybe they don't. It was Tesco's, I don't know whether. But um and they're really expensive actually. So he bought banana blossom instead. Mm, that's which, what I use yeah so it gives it that sort of pinky crab color as well yeah but I did it because they're quite big chunks I probably should have chopped it rather than blended it because when I blended it it kind of went just to mush whereas you want to keep a bit of texture yeah I've had that issue before I think that it kind of um there's a lot of liquid in there as well I think yeah. you kind of need to um 
kind of like put it in a tea towel almost and just sort of strain it to get a lot of the liquid out and then you just have more of that like fleshy uh flaky texture yeah um and then yeah if you just mash the beans up a little bit I think that's the best approach because then they go they don't really hold their shape either when you sort of cook them yeah what else do they have in them seaweed lemon juice I mean mm. whisk we whisk up the water from the beans the bean juice um, oh, okay yeah so I suppose that replaces the egg to sort of hold okay. it together um and some Dijon mustard and a few other things but yeah if, just google um vegan crab cakes and experiment I would suggest yes. I was going to talk about Ayurveda but I think we should talk about that next week because I got I got a bit overexcited after I spoke to Victoria Moran a few episodes ago and she was talking about Ayurvedic eating and okay. then I looked into it and I was like oh my god this is amazing but <laughs> there's been so many news stories that and especially a lot about the rising cost of living so I think let's yeah let's talk about saving money because this is on all of our minds everyone's kind of freaking out and and so many people still saying that a vegan diet is really expensive and it's not accessible for people and yeah I think that's like a really it's quite disheartening when you do hear stuff like that and I completely understand it from like say you know you have like I don't know a single mum or single father or whatever um and working all of these hours and you've got kids to feed or whatever and for some people's some people it may not actually be accessible but I think there is such a lack of education around like sustainable um foods and cooking with vegetables and just creating meals with vegetables rather than the reliance of meat eggs all of this stuff I think that with the proper education proper awareness it can show people that okay I can cook this healthy food and actually I'm probably saving money yeah definitely I it is all about education isn't it and I you know I totally get that you know when you've like you say single parent families or low-income families and you're trying to you know if you sort of trying to cook different meals and things like that but obviously you know pasta vegan and yeah you know tomato sauce with it sort of cheap as chips um I mean I funnily enough I just had an email from Shah you know our friend Shah she said yes. the funny stories about Jason yes so, <laughs> <laughs> lovely so, Shah. Uh, Shah yeah so she was saying about um I mean this isn't actually <laughs> this isn't actually a money saving tip because the bold bean co beans are quite expensive but I mm-hmm. wanted to talk about recipes making with beans but they've just launched in Waitrose and she was saying they're the best beans she's ever tasted Ooh. and I interviewed I think it was back in maybe series one or two I interviewed the founder of Bold Bean Co and she was just talking mm-hmm. about how incredible beans are by the yeah. end of the episode I was like oh my god I need to get loads of beans these yeah <laughs> but they are beans and legumes especially dried are so yes. cheap because they go so far and you can make, you know, and they're so filling, like butter beans. They're so sort of oh, almost meaty. I love butter beans. I've kind of like reignited my love for butter beans recently. Yeah. Yeah. Did I tell you about my spoked aubergine and butter bean um, sort of concoction? Concoction. <laughs> concoction. Was it like a dip or? No. So it was, um, I had aubergine. And again, this is actually probably a really, really cheap meal. Um, so I got aubergine I um, I attempted to sort of blacken it on the gas hob um, with the flames on that but my aubergine was too big so it didn't really cook so I just put it in the oven um, you put it in the grill as well just so it chars and it gets really soft um, and then with the butter beans I just sort of fried off an onion with a little bit of olive oil onion garlic chili um parsley fresh dill and mint mm. um and loads of lemon juice uh obviously butter beans some water a little bit of stock cubes and just kind of let that sit I put a little bit of white wine vinegar in there as well but you you don't have to do yeah. that um and just let that sort of thicken up sort of get the um consistency a little bit thicker and then that's literally it you just have the aubergine on the bed of butter beans and it's just so good I served it with um like a tzatziki almost um oh, and it was just fucking so yeah. good but that was just all veg that was yeah. all vegetables and it. it's was 
one of my my new favorite meals I need to try that I'm gonna try it this week actually I put it on my meal plan meal plan but yeah I mean there's so many things you can do with beans like a minestrone soup and it's so mm-hmm. hearty that you could have that for for dinner and then freeze yeah. some or you know have it for um salads you can have beans with your salad or legumes curries yeah. Um, I think with like maybe even just like conventional meals like I don't know about you but when I was sort of living with my mum we'd have like a spaghetti bolognese there's always like a meal that you have like consistently like every week yeah and like I come from a working class family like my mum um she raised us uh four kids on her own and she um well, she doesn't have a partner but he like works during the week so it is basically her um and she would make us meals and then she'd go to work at four o'clock so we would often have like spaghetti bolognese a curry a stew stuff like that and I think that those sort of dishes are perfect for just cutting out meat like you don't actually need meat in those dishes like a bolognese yeah um you can just do it for either lentils you could just have beans um or just veg I know you can do like mushroom and walnut like mints um but maybe you know quite expensive walnuts are are quite expensive so yeah you'd maybe have like yeah you just have vegetables um and that's such a great way as well to pack in veg I think especially for kids like hidden sort of nutrients is really good um even if yeah even if your kids were eating meat for example obviously don't really want (laughs) to talk about eating meat on a vegan podcast but if they do Mm-hmm. then you could maybe do half and half so you'd be saving money on the meat and you'd be yeah. cutting down on the amount they're having so yeah definitely quite- I think there's just I think it's also probably worth noting as well that realistically not everyone with big families or whatever are just going to go eat vegan overnight I don't think that and I don't think that's going to be sustainable either and I don't think as much as obviously me and you are so pro-vegan and we see that as the future I think there is an element of right okay this maybe isn't going to be accessible for everyone but okay this is how we can increase the shift towards veganism and it's maybe going like three four days a week yeah exactly and just you know and just like you say just kind of sharing that knowledge that it can be such a cheap way to eat yeah um like frozen fruit and veg so much cheaper like buying a punnet of fresh raspberries it's like three quid and you get about 10 yeah you can you can buy everything frozen now can't you um another another way to do it is to get wonky veg so that's cheaper because who cares whether it's you know the carrots dead straight or whether it's got a bit of a kink in it or yeah I this sort of fascination with having like sexy looking veg like I just don't understand it why do we have to have like conventionally attractive vegetables I know it's mad we've just been conditioned haven't we to think yeah look a certain way I know um if you heard of odd box um no I don't think so that so that's a wonky veg delivery um company I don't okay they, they were only in London a few years ago I don't know whether they've expanded much outside yet I, hopefully they have I should have checked really but um I'll have a look and, and obviously link to them in the show notes. But um, the, the thing about getting a veg box delivery, and I know the organic ones, you know, are expensive, but yeah. I feel like, you know, if, you, if you've got like the wonky veg delivery, you do end up saving money because you're not going to the supermarket as much. And when you go to the supermarket, I mean, number one, you have to use petrol, but number two, mm-hmm. you get sucked in. Oh, Kit Kats are on offer or, yeah. you know, like, I don't know obviously they're not vegan I'm a nightmare for it (laughs) with a club card that's why I kind of almost had to stop going to Tesco so frequently I've I've mentioned it before I go to Aldi now because there's just less temptation (laughs) yeah you end up buying stuff that you didn't go for and actually you don't really need and it's not even particularly healthy so Yeah. yeah you come back with all these treats and things and um and when you get that veg box delivery it's like right well we've got you know, we've got all these potatoes. Yeah. What are we going to cook with potatoes? And you have to actually plan your meals around it. Definitely. Um, I think it sort of, it forces you to be creative, doesn't it? And you've spent money on this thing. So you're probably less, I, I know you obviously spend money on shopping, but I feel like if you have it delivered, it's almost like a treat and you're less likely to waste it. So you're 
um yeah you'll be actively searching recipes to to use up this veg and I mean even if you do it sort of like once every other week I know my mum very different situation but my mum was doing like hello fresh yeah yeah like she would do that like once a, a month and it would just sort of she would get different foods and then she'd try different things and then she'd recreate them at home, like yeah. those recipes. That's and I great. think that's even if you sort of do that with a veg box, you could try vegetables that you wouldn't necessarily buy at the supermarket. You'd be like, oh, okay, I'll buy those again. I'd yeah. make this for that. You know, it just kind of, it just, it's all about education and trying things. And yeah. I think it just, it can progress to that. It is. I think when you go to the supermarket, you've got your set things, haven't you? Like mm-hmm. I buy the broccoli, I buy the carrots and you just kind of yeah. ignore everything else. Otherwise you'd be in there for like three hours going, mm, yeah, yeah. aubergine, shall I buy an aubergine? <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, things like aubergine, like we've had, again, going back to the happy pear conversation, like, no no one knows how to cook an aubergine properly and I think it's such an underrated thing myself included like I really struggle with it sometimes like I didn't know you you just got to give it time and patience and understand it and know what works with it and what doesn't and I think there's so many vegetables like that and it just scares people so people don't bother trying them and then they're limited to carrots onions whatever peas I mean (laughs) peas broccoli so British yeah (laughs) Um, I was thinking, so there's, uh, if in case anyone haven't, hasn't heard of them, Made in Hackney is a <laughs> vegan yes. um, kind of or- organisation, I guess. It's like a community-based yeah. um, project, isn't it? And run yes. by Sarah Bentley. And if you scroll back through podcast episodes, we spoke to her a while ago. Um, she's amazing. She set it all up herself and... Um, she's been doing it for the last 10 years so I thought mm-hmm. how about we get a chef on from there because they basically go around to the community in Hackney yeah and deliver free meals which is yeah incredible. I, I love their organization so much I think Sarah is such an inspiration um yeah she's just amazing and I think she is really like a voice of just utilizing whole food plant-based ingredients and you know ditching the reliance on meat and being like you can create so many amazing things just from the basics yeah um so yeah I was thinking I think she's on sabbatical but I was thinking let's get a chef on from Made in Hackney to share some um you know some uh vegan cooking tips on a budget so yes watch this space we're hopefully next month we can start sharing our um cookery series because we've been busy behind the scenes haven't we recording we have we have i'm very excited to share it yeah it's gonna be great if you're looking for fresh and nutritional vegan recipes then our best-selling magazine vegan food and living is on hand to help you can join us today and try an issue for just 99p by visiting veganfoodandliving.com forward slash podcast or using code podcast when you order with us choose between our print and digital plus memberships to receive the latest issue to your door or to your device along with having easy access to thousands of plant-based recipes at your fingertips in our fully searchable digital magazine archive join us today and make cooking delicious vegan food that much more exciting by visiting veganfoodandliving.com forward slash podcast so shall we just quickly do some reviews before we finish so let's go um crosstown and pip and nut so pip and nut is the the nut butter isn't it they do yes nut butters and crosstown is the donut company that's based in london the lovely donut company oh my god <laughs> so they deliver nationwide now and this is this is going from talking about saving money to i know out on some very expensive donuts but oh my god they are one of the most tasty things i've ever put in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> why are they so good i can't i've never tasted anything as nice as that i know they arrived and i was like oh right well god okay i'll just try it i'll try a little corner and then literally i blinked and i'd like scoffed too within 10 minutes i was like (gasps) what have i done these were like cinnamon scroll donuts with Mm. a sort of um cinnamon peanut butter almond butter icing and um sort of chopped nuts I think on the top and oh my god oh yeah so the pip and nut 
almond butter is a cinnamon one yes um and you can buy that as a standalone product and they i've seen it in boots did you that's weird yeah no you can get it in boots um yeah so you can buy that on its own which obviously if you can't afford the donuts then you know that's uh you could put that on your toast which would be really mm-hmm. nice yeah that'd but be nice. yeah they've paired up with um collaborated with crosstown and the the donuts are sort of stuffed with this almond butter really oh, really yummy so good. um if you're quick you could get them for father's day 25 pound for six so maybe eat one yourself <laughs> yeah i would just maybe eat them all <laughs> yeah sod it don't bother about the dads just eat yeah, them forget, forget dad just get them for yourself <laughs> and the other thing we tried this week is a new product from Green Bay and it's um again not not something that you might want if you are on a really tight budget but it's smoked salmon um obviously uh, vegan smoked salmon um how much is this Molly it is quite pricey to be fair um it's five pounds 49 for a 80 gram pack so uh, I would say there's probably about six or seven sort of um slices are they called slices yeah um which yeah it's quite expensive but I mean you know everyone's allowed to treat themselves these days and this is definitely a treat I wasn't the biggest fan of smoked salmon anyway I don't I didn't sort of eat it quite frequently I sort of maybe had it twice ever but it's the sort of thing you have as a treat though, isn't it? Like at Christmas yeah. or, you know, you wouldn't just be eating smoked salmon on a Tuesday. No, just you like... were quite, you were a big, maybe not a big smoked salmon eater, but you ate smoked salmon, didn't you? Quite yeah. Frequently. Yeah. I used to like it like salty fish with sort of lemon juice and, you know, pepper. Mm-hmm. So um, I really enjoyed this with other stuff, other things. Like yes. I think straight out the packet, it's um. I mean, it's a, it's a good texture. Like this very similar sort of slippery texture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. It's got a good smell to it as well. Yeah, it's not quite as smoked as I thought it would be. Because, yeah. I mean, a quick tip here to make your own vegan smoked salmon is to just boil, um, so get a mandolin mm-hmm. with a carrot, um, steam or boil the carrot just for a few minutes to soften it up and then marinate it in like smoked paprika and, you know, cheap, cheap as anything yeah I think that would be like a sort of cheaper alternative as you say yeah I think this one's really good I used um I made some sushi with it oh okay tell me yes I made some sushi (laughs) um yes so I made umaki 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 sushi which essentially just means inside out so it's the rice is the outer layer and um so the way you do it is you put a nori sheet down with the rice and then you flip it over and then you put the filling in so I used avocado and I did a quick sort of rice vinegar and um sesame sort of mixture and pickled some cucumber uh Mm. thinly sliced cucumber so I laid that down rolled the sushi up and then layered it with this salmon and topped it with um, like a quick pickle of radish wow. it was so tasty hang on how does that rice not all fall apart and fall off because you have to just make it really really sticky and you sort of have um I always put like a sushi season in it in with it you can get it in most um, Asian supermarkets I think you can get them in any supermarket to be honest um it's just like a mixture of um I think it's like sugar water a bit of lemon maybe some vinegar I'm not too sure what goes in there but it's just to sort of stick make the rice sticky and make it more compact um but yeah you just really pack it down um okay and yeah it just becomes really really good sticky I mean that would be lovely wouldn't it you know if you're trying to impress friends and maybe sort of turn them vegan and that could be a great option like check this out they'd be like but it's smoked salmon you'd be like try it try it um, (laughs) it's it was so good I also made some tuna um I did a tuna version as well but from watermelon oh my god wow yes so good I forgot I, about that because watermelon has the texture of like raw tuna doesn't it yeah it's got when you sort of um so I baked it to draw yes. the moisture out of it so when you draw the moisture out of it it goes like yeah really fleshy 
um kind of like a raw steak or tuna steak my my honestly my daughter is gonna go nuts she is absolutely obsessed she's vegan yeah. absolutely obsessed with sushi since we had the happy maki sushi at camp festival and oh. then when when we went to brighton we went to the shop and since then we've had to recreate it at home on many occasions when i really don't want to be making sushi she's like what do you want for tea sushi <laughs> no we're not having sushi again <laughs> and you know it all fell apart last time i did it so i yeah i need a little you need to be a chef molly doing some tutorials i know well actually i um there is a reel of the salmon umaki sushi on vegan food and living instagram oh so, nice i'll have a look yes done by yours truly thank you that's okay <laughs> no, i'm just plugging myself here <laughs> you need your own instagram account molly i do i know i have that is it's in the works things good. come in good good because i want to follow you and tag you and stuff yeah. although to be fair i'm rubbish at instagram and <laughs> yeah <laughs> never, i'm never on it <laughs> That's the thing I say about doing an Instagram, but I just, I just don't know if I've got any time to host three Instagrams. I'm really bad at Simply Vegan yeah. ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking of Instagram, you can follow us, of course, at Vegan Food and Living and at Simply Vegan Podcast, if Molly yes. updates it. <laughs> when Molly updates it. <laughs> um, well, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you Thursday for our interview and we'll be back next Tuesday. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps us keep going. 